What's up Amazon sellers today? I am gonna go through VAT, value added tax, VAT. That is the tax that you have to pay within the UK when your business reaches a certain size or maybe some other conditions. Today, I'm gonna to go through everything about it. I'm gonna talk about what it is, give you some examples, and hopefully explain how this all works for you. So stay tuned, I will share all. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I have been an Amazon seller now for about four years, selling on Amazon, pretty much in the UK, doing online arbitrage. Buy low, sell high, pretty much from retail stores. If you wanna find out more about a mission I'm currently on to do a million pound by the end of 2021, have a look up there. I've got a great video about how I talk it through, what I do, and also I give you a breakdown step-by-step step what I'm doing. And obviously you can download a free guide that I have as well. So have a look at that. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be going through, number one, what is VAT? Number two, I'm gonna go through how it works. And I'm gonna give you a nice example to understand it. Number three, I'm gonna say how it works within the Amazon ecosystem. So we're gonna take a product, look at that and see how that affects it. Number four, when do you need to register for VAT? And it's different for different scenarios. So I'll talk about that. And then number five, I'll talk about the different VAT schemes. That obviously you can look at and obviously speak to a professional about. So let's get started. Let's learn about VAT now. Okay, so first things first, what do you got to realize? VAT, value added tax, it's a, it's a financial obligation that you've got to pay when you reach a certain threshold or you'll be paying it already, but maybe you don't realize it. Now, one thing I'm going to say, because it's financial and because, hey, this is actually quite complex, watch this video of the guide. But again, it is that I am not a, a professional accountant. I do not have a qualification in accounting. So if you have questions, if you need professional advice about VAT, do speak to a professional, obviously an accountant, that is gonna really help you out. Unfortunately, this video is not professional advice, so just be very mindful of that. This is just a guide of how I view that and the way I've interpreted it in my business. But what I will say is if you've got any questions, obviously I will try and answer them and I appreciate VAT is a pretty complex subject, but you can drop them down in the comments and obviously I'll try and get back to you when I can and obviously try and give you an answer. But again, speaking to a professional will probably be your best advice. Let's get started. Okay, so what I will say is I've created a presentation to help support you in understanding what VAT is. I really hate doing presentations, but this is a complex subject and we really need to understand what's happening. So we'll jump on the computer and we'll go through the presentation and obviously I'll talk through obviously what is happening because it's just gonna help you understand VAT. VAT, value added tax, what is that? That is the important question. So VAT, value added tax, well, first things first, as it says, it's VAT and it's a value added tax that's added on to products that are sold or products and services that are sold. Congratulations, you've now become a tax collector for the UK government. Good job. Cool. So let's just go through what VAT is. What is VAT or value added tax? Well, quite simply, value added tax is a tax imposed on the sale of goods and services. So quite simply, you are now a tax collector. If you are that registered, you're a tax collector for the government because you've imposed that tax on the sale of goods and services. If you want to sell a product, this is the tax imposed on top of that. And then whenever you buy a product, you're paying the price including tax. So just be mindful of that. Now within the UK, that tax rate is 20%. That's the rate of tax we add on top of a product, 20% once before it's sold, and obviously the price you pay has already got that 20% on. What we'll go through now is there are gonna be two things we'll talk about. Input VAT, which is the VAT imposed on purchases, and then output VAT, which is the VAT imposed on the sales. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about these two, but we will talk about them. You don't really have to understand which one's which. It's just basically saying that whenever you buy anything, you're paying VAT on it and whenever you sell anything, you're paying that on it. Generally speaking, if you're buying from big, big retailers, anyone who's doing over a certain amount, and we'll kind of explain why that is. But for the majority of times, you're gonna be paying that on your purchases and that on your sales. So how does VAT work? Well, quite simply, 
Let's say, for example, you. You find a nice phone in Argos for £500, and it's £500 on display. So first things first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a look at your Argos invoice or receipt. And on that receipt, it's gonna have a bit of information that you're looking for. Number one, obviously you've got the item description, mobile phone, but it's gonna show you the VAT that you've paid that. And you can see here, it's got that at 20%. And then also as well, it's gonna have a VAT number. Now what's really important, it's got a VAT number. Why? Because it tells you that is the VAT number of the company you've just purchased the product from. And that is their number that they report all their VAT to the government through for the purposes of tax collection and payment of VAT. Now from this invoice or from this, should we say this receipt that you've got now, and it could be a paper receipt, just by having the purchase amount and the VAT paid and the VAT number, you know that that supplier is a VAT registered supplier and that you've paid tax on it, VAT, because you've got a VAT number and you can see how much there is. There are some nuances, but don't worry, generally speaking, as long as you've got a VAT number and you can see the VAT rate of the product, and that means you've paid VAT on that product. So once you've ascertained that you now pay VAT, you understand that for this phone right now, it's a VAT registered supplier that you've purchased it from and for that 500 pound that you purchased breaks down into two parts. One, the part for the price of the phone that the supplier keeps and then the other part is the VAT VAT charged on that purchase. So for this 500 pound purchase, the supplier charged 416 pound 67 and then had to add 20% on top of that, which is 83.33, which makes the total price of 500 pounds. Now you might be asking, hey, 83.33 isn't 20% of 500 pounds. No, you're right. But 83.33 is 20% of 416.67. And the reason why we do it that way is because in our country, within the UK, we show the prices including the taxes so 500 pound is a nice number, but telling you 416.67 isn't a nice number. Whereas in other countries, the US perhaps, they will show you the price X tax, and then also you add the tax on afterwards. So for us, we always show it including the tax, hence why it's 500 pound. You need to be aware that that has the 20% tax included in that price. So we've now bought a phone from a VAT registered supplier for a total price of 500 pounds of which the suppliers keep £416.67 and there's tax that we're paying on that of £83.33. So we've got this brand new phone that we really like and we want to sell it on Amazon for £1,000. Yes, £1,000. We are excited. Now, when we make this sale, remember we have paid £500 on that price of the phone, but also as well, we're now selling it for £1,000. Now you've got to remember in that thousand pound, there is tax that is due. So on that thousand pound, we've actually sold it for, i.e. what we keep, 833 pounds and 33 pence. 20% of 833 pounds and 33 pence is the tax that we're going to pay to the tax man, which is 166, 67 pence. So that is the tax that we are due to pay. Now, quite simply, while we're due to pay 16667 you've got to remember, we've already paid some tax to the other supplier. So how much do we actually have to pay the government in tax? We need to pay an output tax of 16667 but remember, we've already paid an input tax on the purchase of 8333. So all we do is we pay the difference because we've got the receipt to prove that we paid the tax. We owe a certain amount of tax on the sale of the product. All we're doing now is paying the difference, which is 83.34. So we're only gonna pay the government physical cash of 83.34 because we've already physically paid tax on the other goods when we purchased them from Argos of 83.33. That is how tax works. Still not the most easiest thing to understand, but hopefully that's given you a better understanding of how it works in a typical transaction within the UK. First things first, I need some coffee. Oh, I'm getting a bit parched. Parched, how, how, how posh am I? Bloody hell. I'd probably say, if you think I'm posh, write it down below. Maybe well-spoken, I'm not posh at all. I went to a 
state school. So how does that affect Amazon sales? So VAT on Amazon sales and obviously the fees that you're going to be paying. Let's go through an example. We're going to look at non-registered, i.e. this is non-registered VAT seller and then obviously a VAT seller. Now, if you are just starting out in Amazon, maybe you're just selling, you are going to be a new non-registered VAT seller. And if you've been selling for some time or if you're from abroad and we'll talk about that, i.e. you're selling outside of the UK, then you need to register for that and you should look at the VAT registered side. So let's just kind of go through now. Let's just say, for example, I'm selling a wonderful kid's toy. There you go, nice, nice doll, we're playing this, we're selling this product. Now, for a non-registered VAT seller, I'm going to be selling this product on the Amazon Marketplace, lifting shown £17. Now, quite simply, in addition to that £17, what are my costs? What do I need to understand? Well, the product itself, when I bought it, let's say from Argos, is going to cost me £6. Now that £6, remember, is made up of £5, which goes to the supplier, Argos, and £1, which is tax on that £5 at 20%. So while I see £6, there is tax in that. Now, in regards to Amazon, they have two fees that they charge you, sometimes three, a closing fee, but not always. But we're looking at the referral fee. So within Amazon, that referral fee you'll see on Amazon Revenue Calculator and also the FBA fee. Now, the one thing on the calculator, they don't add in the VAT for you, the VAT. They just show you what the actual fee is. So if you were to look at the referral calculator right now and do the same calculations, you'd see a referral fee of say £2.80. That's fine. But there is a VAT to pay on that because Amazon will charge you a VAT, value added tax, on that referral fee of 56 pence. And on the FBA fee, you're going to pay £4 to Amazon and they're going to pay another VAT on top of that of 80 pence. So in total, for all the products, the fees, the referral fee and the FBA fee, you can pay £6, 36 pence and £4.80. Sorry, £3.36 pence and £4.80. And then total fees and everything, tax all included, that's actually going to be paid £14.16. So you paid £14.16, you sold it for £17. You've made £17 revenue. Your profit, your profit from that sale is going to be £2.84, which gives you a gross margin, which is your profit divided by your revenue or sale price, or sale price, sorry, your profit divided by your sale price of 16.7%. Not huge, not bad, not huge, but that is the calculation that you're looking at. Now, what if your VAT registered? Let's go through the same calculation. Quite simply, same product, same sale price to the customer, £17. But remember, in that sale price, we are going to have to pay output VAT, output that, £2.83, remember 20%, and we're going to have product costs. So our product costs now, we're going to account for them in regards to the saying that we don't need to account for the VAT because we can claim that back from our sales. So, our product costs are now only going to cost us £5 because we're claiming back the VAT. The referral fee, interesting enough, you're going to pay £2.80 and £4. That brings your total cost to £11.80. Now, there's a slightly interesting thing Amazon does in regards to the referral fee and that FBA fee. When you are a non vat registered seller, you, you pay VAT in the UK. But when you are a vat registered seller, they actually charge you the VAT from, I think it's Luxembourg. It does some weird VAT thing, but in effect, you don't actually pay it. Well, Amazon doesn't pay it, they move it around. So there's a slight difference in how they, where they charge the VAT from, non VAT registered and VAT registered. Don't worry, calculation wise, it's exactly the same. So total fees, you're paying here £11.80. So product costs £5, referral fee £2.80, and FBA fee £4, total fees £11.80. Now remember, we sold this product for £17, but we had to pay VAT on that sale price. So our actual price, we get to keep £14.16. Remember, total fees £11.80. That gives us a profit of £2.36. That's £14.16 minus £11.80, which gives us a gross profit margin of 13.8. So you can see here that being a VAT registered seller actually means you earn less profits and you have a lower margin which makes it a bit more competitive 
Not great, not an ideal situation, but hey, just take it as part and parcel, a badge of honor that you've succeeded, you're doing well, and now, welcome to the real world where we pay taxes on everything that we do. It's just part of doing business. That us becoming more efficient. The next question you might be asking is, when do I need to register? What, what's the situations? What's the scenarios I need to register for VAT? So again, speak to a professional. This is gonna be super important for you. Get legal or get professional advice. This is just a guide, shouldn't be used for professional advice. So when do you need to register? Well, quite simply, whenever you reach 85,000 pound, you're gonna, or are you planning to exceed it within the past 12 months or even in a one month period. So 85,000 pound is the correct limit or threshold for VAT within the UK this year, which is 2020 and 2021. So for you, it might change if you're watching this maybe in a couple of years time, but do check with a professional. The other scenario is whereby you are a seller who is not in the UK. And by that, it might be that you are a limited company in another country or an individual in another country because you are not a resident or a limited company formed within the UK, you or registered in the UK, you now need to pay, be registered for VAT from the start. Doesn't matter about 85, it's from zero. That's what you need to do. And Amazon will ask you for that information when they do their verification check. So just be aware of that. Now, different types of VAT schemes, what can you be or what do you need to be aware of? Maybe a bit of extra reading for you if you are interested in looking at them. And again, seek professional advice, they're gonna advise you. So generally, most people go on what's known as a standard accounting scheme. That's just the general tax rate scheme that, or VAT accounting scheme that everyone goes on. And it's pretty much where you pay your VAT returns to the government four times a year. But there are three other types of schemes that are variations on this to help different types of businesses. And I'll just quickly list them now. I'm not gonna go into them, but you might wanna do some research if you are interested. And I'll point out maybe one or two, which other sellers sometimes do. You get the annual accounting scheme. That is pretty much exactly the same as the standard accounting scheme where you normally pay four times a year, but because it's annual, you pay once per year. Don't think this is a great thing. It just means you've now got a really big bill to pay at the end of the year. The other one, which actually some VAT registered sellers do, who maybe just cross the line over the 85,000 but aren't looking to go very big very quick, is a flat rate scheme. It makes administration quite simple, quite easy. So you can certainly look at that one. Um, and then finally, cash accounting scheme. This is generally for service-based businesses whereby you only pay the tax once the actual payment has been made. Sometimes where they have long lead times for manufacturing, for example, whereby they're not actually getting paid yet. They're waiting for the money to come in, maybe in a couple of months time. So only until they actually get paid will they pay the VAT, not once they register the sale, but that's before the payment. Don't worry too much. Generally speaking, the one people look at is the flat rate scheme, if anything, from the standard VAT, flat, uh, standard VAT scheme. So that's that. But one thing you've got to be aware of is VAT is very important. People or the government, HMRC, will come back to you and they will come after you if you are not paying it. Literally, we see it every single time. If you miss a single VAT payment, they are on it. Letters coming through, messages, they are chasing you down. They want that tax. It's a very, very important tax within the UK and they will chase you down for it. So it's an obligation. Make sure you get it paid and make sure you register. And finally, I will say it again and again and again, get professional advice. I am not a professional in this. I'm not qualified. This is just a guide. You should seek professional advice. Hopefully you've learned something about VAT today and you know what, get professional advice. That is gonna really, really be important for you. What I will say is hit that like button, smash it. In fact, if you liked that, you know, these kind of videos I really enjoy doing and hey, I'm happy to do more. Just give me a like. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments down below. And the one thing I will say is VAT is obviously going to affect your profitability and hey, even your cash flow because managing VAT payments to the government four times a year obviously has an impact on cash flow. So what I will say is I'm going to drop a video around here of a, a guide that I created with a with a spreadsheet that's going to help you manage that cash flow effectively that I use every single week in my business. Watch that. But what I will say is for me, Thomas Parkinson, Fast Track FBA. Thank you very much.